What is going on everybody, welcome back to EU4, um, another, well a new AI only battle, I haven't done one of these for a while, I, I had no idea how to intro it so that's why it's such a mess already, um, but yeah welcome, we are as you can see the year 1701, it is the triple, no, the, the war of the Spanish succession start date it is available in the base game if you want to play along or any of that stuff or are interested in this scenario, obviously I've just finished a pretty bruising 65 episode Let's play, so I thought we'd do something a little bit shorter, and I couldn't really decide who to play as as well in the regular game. I looked at the map, and there are some big changes. France has really changed, not in this, but in the you know the regular start date, and there was some cool stuff over here, but I didn't really fancy as cool as like Herzegovina being like coming out of Bosnia looked. I, I don't think I can really compete with the Ottomans on that one just yet with my ability level. So I don't know. I'll think of something to do for a let's play, but for now I thought we'd do another. AI only scenario, um, and yeah, let me know if you like these, and maybe I can do some more in the future. But yeah, this is the war trip, the war for the Spanish succession. So I think the history behind it: Spain just lost their leader. Um, I think that's how this is supposed to be. No, maybe France. Uh, wait, what? Wait, Spain's at war with Austria, not France. What? Okay, now I'm confused. I think <laughs> I don't. It should become clear as soon as I've pressed play, like for a day. Um, it is, I, I think it's supposed to be France and Spain, the Austria, Britain and the Netherlands, and the goal of Britain or England, Austria and the Netherlands is to stop France owning Spain or Spain owning France, one or the other. Um, but France doesn't appear to be in this war, so I don't, I don't know if they just pieced out like, oh no, one year. Okay, oh, they've both got no heir, so I think basically it's guaranteed one of them will die first, right? And the other one's going to get a personal union. Um, I think that's what's going to happen. So it, it might be one way round or the other way round, but very soon one of them's leader should die, and then then the whole of the world will be in a mess. But at the moment Spain is actually already at war, so I don't really know how that's all worked out with the Netherlands, Austria, and England. But yeah, we can obviously keep up with a lot of things. Quite a useful part of EU4. If there's other things in the world, we'll be looking at Russia and the Commonwealth currently fighting Sweden. The Mughals, pretty big power in India, having a war. And, I don't know who these are, that's in sort of Southeast Asia. But yeah, there's plenty of ways we can keep up with the war. Obviously, Qing, keep an eye on them, they'll probably do really well. Like, it's just guaranteed at this point. The game is not really good at balancing giant, giant countries. So Qing will probably be amazing, I would guess. They normally are. Military... Totals, no, Russia leads the way, then the Ottomans, okay, maybe the force limit will keep them down, but Spain, Qing, the Mughals, Commonwealth, Austria, France, so there you go, and of course we can have a little look at the great powers list, use that as a rough guide of who's the strongest in the world when it's sort of adjusted for technology. As you can see, Spain and France leading, so that is why the Europeans, probably, other Europeans probably don't want them merging together, or forming a union of sorts, because that would not be very fun. But yeah, so what is this actual war for? Because I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be for... Oh, and the Ottomans just going after Yemen. War of the Spanish Succession. So it's Austria, England, the Netherlands, Prussia, Hanover, some English colonies, which we'll keep an eye on the colonies as well, against Bavaria, Cologne, Spain, Portugal, Savoy, and a lot of colonies there. Okay, not really sure. Um... Not sure why France isn't involved, but there you go. But here's the colonial world. Um, it's pretty early in its life, I would say. I mean, not so much South America's a bit, you know, further down the line. But North America's still not necessarily open. But one of these guys could still win it, right? It could go to Spain. It could go to England. It could go more French. Um, it's not necessarily settled as to who's going to get what. I think that's the best way to describe what's going on over there. Yeah, we will be able to see more of what's going on in the wars. We can obviously zoom in, but at the moment it's kind of... Looks like Spain's doing some damage and sieging in the Netherlands. This war is not particularly close. They're not really... I don't know. There's a lot of fighting going on in random places you can see in here. Austria, the Commonwealth. So yeah, feel free to leave like a choice. Like a, I, I don't know if you want to do a pick. Sometimes people do. I would guess that Qing probably by the end would win. I, I, I guess, I, I don't know, but I have a feeling they would probably win anyway. It's not, obviously, it's not like Civ, it's not like, you know, you're not going to see the lake here just win out of randomness. It's not going to happen, but I don't know. You can leave a pick anyway, and if it if there is, you know, 
some shout outs to be given I'll try and remember but yeah like I said it doesn't matter just whatever but if you'd like to leave a comment that is more than welcome Sweden v the Commonwealth going down I'm surprised that Sweden was winning early on I assume that's not going to last like surely Russia we just saw they were the most powerful country in the world surely going to turn this around and already no, they're still losing I don't know how <laughs> how is Sweden doing so much on their own got an Ethiopian war in Africa We'll try and keep an eye on some of the smaller countries, but obviously not always easy when there's like 15 wars at once. Ottomans with zero war score against Yemen. Something tells me that's to do with the distance to get there more than anything else. Persia also in a war in sort of Central Asia. Yep, yeah, with some of these guys up here. We've got Persia and the Ottomans. Okay, I don't know how they have zero against Yemen. I guess Yemen's just cancelled it out, but yeah, the Ottomans should win this really easily. Shouldn't be a problem for them at all. I'm just trying to keep an eye on when the big ones finish because that's when you can. It's hard, you can't even see the peace deal, so it is hard. But hopefully, there's some visible changes or at least some independent nations. That'll be good. So, let's have a little look just early on, see who is actually allied to who. So, England allied with Sweden, and I don't think they're allied. Oh, Sweden and Austria is their allies. The Commonwealth. Independent. Oh, is the vassal of Kurland? What? Oh no, has the vassal Kurland, but is a junior partner of Saxony. Don't know how that's happened or how long it'll last. Denmark actually wants to help the Commonwealth break free, but there you go. And I guess Saxony's allied to Russia. Yes. Some weird alliances I would not expect here, but fair enough. Scotland's still around, so no Great Britain just yet. I don't know when. Oh no, they're a junior partner, so that means some point in this series they'll probably be integrated and Great Britain will probably form at some point in this in this one. Okay, okay, so Spain, I, I really thought France was involved, but apparently not, and now they're actually just attacking some col some natives, so that's always, uh, always good, going after more colonial territory. Who is this? This is a lovely blue colour against Austria's background. Bavaria. Very impressed. I, wait, how? I thought Bavaria were on the same team. What the heck is going on? Bavaria must be on Spain's team, obviously. It seems to be the point where all the battling is going down. Yeah, they're on Spain's team. Never mind. So Bavaria is allied to France, but has not brought them into this. That seems a bit, a bit reckless. That said, Spain is winning. So uh, who am I to judge what Austria and England... Are doing well and aren't doing well. Spain's winning that pretty well. 22 war score. Russia now starting to look a little bit stronger against Sweden. 99 war score there. We should see a peace deal. That little war. I think that's down here somewhere. Funge is, yeah, that's something in here. Look, that'll be these guys getting annexed, I imagine. Let's see if we get it right. It's going to happen. It'll never happen now. We'll just stare at it and nothing will happen. Yep, looks that way. But yeah, we'll keep an eye on the rest of the world, but obviously there will be a focus towards the bigger countries. Um, who are the biggest countries to keep an eye on? Let's just have a look. So you've got a few Portugal and Spain and most of South America, to be honest. North America, again, Spain, Britain, and or England and France. Europe, obviously, we've got Spain, France, England, the Netherlands, Sweden. Obviously, all the HRE can do some interesting stuff. Austria. The Ottomans, Commonwealth, if they can get their independence, that'd be good for them. Prussia, I guess, and Russia. Like I said the Ottomans in Africa. You got Morocco, normally quite a good one to look out for. And we might see some stuff. I mean, South Africa's probably gonna get colonized at some point. And we'll see what some of these guys can do. Maybe if someone sort of blobs out a little bit, we'll keep an eye on them. Um, obviously we just saw these guys here with one province and Dongo, in my previous Austria series, conquered like all of this region. Very impressive. So we'll see if something like that happens. Obviously the Mughals here, will they maybe form an India or something out of this? And Qing, Japan, Korea is no longer independent, but we'll see what happens there. And Russia might fall apart. That's something that happens a fair amount, normally through a mix of rebels just being too far away to get to. And also Qing can tend to cause them some issues throughout this game. So yeah, that's sh this should be fun. A lot of things to look out for. Keep an eye on. We've made it through three years in one episode. Maybe I overestimated 
quick little series. I'm sure it's just the first. It's this big Spain war. Once that's done, it won't be as bad. And everyone also jumped into big wars right at the start. I want to see this Russia peace deal. I imagine this is going to be the first major peace deal we get to witness. I imagine the Ottomans will also conquer Yemen. But for the most part, I think this should be pretty big. I imagine we might see Russia taking a bit of land for themselves. Actually, what was the purpose of this war? Great Nordic War. Okay, well that's just that is an amazing name, but it means it's just one of those wars that was always going to happen as part of the scenario. Not necessarily a purpose to it as such. But yeah, Russia might end up taking some stuff here. You never know. Could see all kinds of crazy things happening. But they are. They only had thirty-seven war score. Peace deal's not guaranteed. Anytime soon. I don't know if anyone's been separate pieced in this war. There is a lot of wars going on as you can see. Um, France, the main one here, against they've already pieced out one group of natives. Russia, 33 war score. Yeah, quite a few sort of wars between different tribes around the world here, and mostly sort of sub Saharan Africa, uh, Indian subcontinent sort of wars, Southeast Asia as well. Not too many in Europe, aside the actual really big ones. Austria here losing to Bavaria. Again, not really sure what sort of peace deal you'd get from that. One of the things with EU4 is you can't really do a lot with a peace deal. Like in these massive wars, even if one side absolutely stomps the other side and they're two, you know, super powerful sides, you don't get, you know, that Hearts of Iron 4, the whole of Europe is now yours kind of thing. You just get, you might get a couple of provinces and then, then the aggressive expansion is just too much and then... <laughs> Just sad times. But yeah, it's not as easy to get a big peace deal in EU4. It's a lot harder to sort of make a change and break down the big countries. It takes a lot. So we'll see what happens. But at the moment, Austria is certainly struggling to Bavaria here. So that's quite interesting. Spain's been putting in a lot of work. But a lot of... be interesting what happens in Europe when this is over. Because obviously all these civs will be very low on manpower. You know, quite depleted in that sense of resources. But France, on the other hand, has just sat here and done nothing. And we'll obviously be looking to maybe find their escape. The Commonwealth wouldn't... Supported by Denmark, I think they're going to need more than that, I'm afraid. They are probably going to need a little bit more than Denmark. Because it would be the Commonwealth and Denmark v Saxony, Russia, and some others. Yeah, I don't think that would quite work out for you. But if the Commonwealth could get someone else, I don't know who it would be. I don't know how the relations are this late in the time frame. I don't know whether the Ottomans would be keen on it. But, you know, maybe somebody like that could help them grab some independence. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's Russia with some good progress here. Conquering most of Sweden. The Netherlands have managed to clear out their occupations. But the war hasn't really touched Spain at all. So they're doing fine. And as you can see, they are making a fair bit of progress now into Austria. It's been a while since we've seen Austria not doing so well on this channel, obviously. They've just been managed amazingly. If I don't say so myself. Obviously if you want to check that out as well. There's 65 episodes if you're looking for something to do um, during lockdown. They're all 15 minutes I think. There might be a period in the middle where they were 20 minutes. But yeah it's just a little bit of light stuff. It is a successful series. You know you don't have to worry about it all going wrong. This war is I think over. I, I, I don't know. Sometimes people get separately pieced out. If you're new to EU4 just watching from the AI only side of things. Um, but it looks, yeah, that is a complete peace deal. And as it stands, Spain is not owned by anyone. Uh, neither is France on that note. So they're both independent to do what they want. Okay, well that sets the scene. But they could ally each other or something like that. Which is pretty big. Austria retained their alliance with England. But it looks like they lost their alliance with everyone else apart from England. So we'll see how that pans out for Europe. Quite interested in the Netherlands. That, I want to see them do well. That could be pretty cool. A strong Netherlands. Yeah, that would be super interesting to me. So the main wars now, I think the Ottomans have pieced out with Yemen, just judging from this, and they're now in another war down here. We can use this cool map mode to see what's going on. Ethiopia. Okay. And yeah, not so good for you guys. And oh my goodness, they are up against quite a bit there. That's pretty rough. France against three different groups of natives, Ottawa, the Cree, Huron, the Cree, not quite the menacing force they can sometimes be in Civ 5 here, that is for, that's for certain, um, but yeah, the Ottomans with quite a bit of success, I don't even know where half these places are, 
it's okay. There's hundreds of nations. Most of these also are not sort of the initial initial ones. This is in Japan, I think. Which still hasn't formed, which makes me feel better about how I managed to form Japan. <laughs> Couldn't do it in real life, but I did it in a video game, you know. So, who's the winner there? Has anyone colonised Australia yet? No, it's still open. Um, some good here. Spain is in the Philippines, but that is, that's about it in terms of Europeans down here. Oh no, the Dutch are here as well. Has any what European got a bit of India? Oh, the Netherlands have parts of southern India, so... Honestly, this isn't like... This isn't like, uh, sort of... There is some elements that EU4 can't really simulate, so the Mughals will probably get that back off the Netherlands incredibly easily. Like, that's just... Just the reality to it. I know the Netherlands probably have a technology advantage. Let's have a look what technology levels. they got 22s across the board. 18s, 4 ahead of the Mughals, but simply the Mughals can just hold it forever and... The Netherlands may never even come and unconquer it, basically. But yeah, hopefully you're excited for this. I certainly am. To see what happens. See what cool scenarios we get. Normally something crazy will happen, which is always fun. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you're new to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.